parts in your body which you can't see, like the heart, the lungs, the liver, and uh, so on and so forth. And the uniqueness of the body is that each member does its work. Each member does its work and expects the rest of the parts to do what he, what that part can't do by itself. You understand what I'm saying? The uniqueness of the body is, now my hand doesn't do everything for me. My hand does certain things for me. But the hand expects the eye to see for it. The hand expects the legs to take, take it to places. The hand expects the heart to pump the blood. Now the hand does not pump blood. But this part of the body expects the other members to do what part could not do. Now there are no unimportant parts in your body. Now a little bit of a sensitive question. How many of you bite nails? My, I'm, sh I'm shy but I'm raising my hand. I bite nails. Okay? I know a certain people who bite nails. I'm not going to mention them. Now, though you bite your nails, do you think that your nails are unimportant to you? You bite them off. But do you think your nails are unimportant? No, absolutely no. You look after your nails, you polish them. Sometimes you go to manicure and get it longer, lengthened. You know, there is no problem in that, but nails are important. N Right? Take the foot. Your foot cannot do more much of creative work. Your foot is a, is a part of your body that has a very limited movement. The foot can only walk. It can run, but you can't do anything much with it. But look at your hand. Your hand can do so many things. Hand is a part that is creative. It can sew, it can type computers, it can, uh, it can do so many creative work. Hands are very creative. Now, some in the church are like the hands. They are very creative. They can do so many things. But sometimes for the hands to be creative, there, there is the feet who are strong and who need to carry them. Sometimes the hands can't be that creative if the foot will not take you around. Now, the church is meant to be a body. You know, some are creative and some help others to be creative. That's all part of the body. Now, being a part of the body is not a matter of skill. It's not a matter of talent but it's a matter of your heart. Do you feel part of this body today? Well, I'm glad to say that is your heart. Are you, do you feel a part of this body today? Uh, don't, do you not feel a body today? Do you feel estranged from this body today? That shows your heart. Being a member or not being a member is a matter of the heart, not a matter of the skill. If you turn with me to 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 17. So the body is not one part but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, in spite of this, it still belongs to the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I don't belong to the body, in spite of this, it still belongs to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing be? If the whole were an ear, where would the sense of the smell be? You were designed to find your place in this body of Christ. We will not understand the full benefit of the body of Christ until we are connected to each other. 
sometimes you are tempted to say, you know, I am not looked after well. I, I have this, nobody cares about me. That's all because we are not connected to the body. If we are connected to the body, we have the privilege of enjoying the benefit of the body. Only when we are fitted in covenant relationship with to each other, we will find its full benefit. Many have reacted to religious control, hurt or disappointment and become independent, unaccountable and unleadable Christians. Believers are marooned on the uninhabited island of isolation. Cutting your, yourself off from the rest of the body will stop the circulation necessary for you to grow and thrive as a member of Christ. Hallelujah. If, if church is not a family, you have missed out a lot in your Christian life. If this church is not your extended family, you have missed out a lot in knowing Christ. Now some people go to a conference and they try to get from a conference what they should be getting from a covenant relationship. What makes, what makes the conference differ from a family? What makes the conference differ from a family? In the family there are covenant relationships covenant relationships that makes a family meaningful if there are no relationships there is no meaning for a family okay if you don't have family relationships here even this gathering would be a conference to you if we don't have family if this is not family to us even this meeting, what we are enjoying, will be a conference to you. What we go, get from a conference is very much different from what we get from family. I just want to change my trend of thoughts a little bit. How many of you have heard of cohabiting? Well, Sometimes people refer to it as living together. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm so thankful to God that in Sri Lanka, living together is not the norm. I know it's happening very much, but it's not the norm. And I'm sure you parents and me parent, we are so happy that, that it's still not the norm in Sri Lanka. If you go elsewhere, you see it's the norm but here in Sri Lanka it's not the norm cohabiting now there's a stark difference between a cohabiting relationship and a marriage covenant now people who live together or cohabit have the very silly excuse saying oh you know marriage is just a piece of paper I don't want to sign because it's just a piece of paper and I sometimes wonder when they give this excuse, if it is just a piece of paper, uh, why not sign it? It's just a piece of paper anyway. You know, why not sign it? But if uh, people who cohabit do not want to sign a marriage certificate because their relationship in that, uh, their relationship is not based on covenant love, but on having their needs met. Do you understand what I'm talking of? In a cohabiting relationship, they want their needs met. And as a result, they, f they give the fear of abandonment to manipulate the partner to get what they want. In a cohabiting relationship, if you don't please me, the next moment I'm out of this relationship, I'm going. Okay? There's an unspoken but a very, very, very clear message in cohabiting. What is that? I am in this relationship to get what I want. As long as you please me, I am in the relationship. The day that you don't want to please me, I am not in the relationship. The, 
in other words people who live together don't want to make an agreement that lasts forever because that would take away the insecurity that they have placed on their partner to perform so they cannot sign a contract they cannot sign a covenant because there is an element of fear of abandonment that has to be there if you don't please me i am out are you still with me okay now uh, uh, read with me luke 22 verses 47 to 48 luke 22 while he was still speaking suddenly a mob was there and one of the 12 named judas was leading them he came near jesus to kiss him but jesus said to him judas are you betraying the son of man with a kiss judas came to jesus and as soon as he saw he kissed him but his heart was not with jesus he kissed him now i call this cohabiting relationship the judas spirit the judas spirit is not an alien spirit in our culture it is slowly but surely in colombo this judas culture is sometimes taken as the norm for people they are here only to get what they want you find it rampant now there are three covenants in the word of god can you name the three covenants what is the first covenant it is not very difficult sorry sorry yeah there is a covenant with god there is a covenant with god what is name another covenant we find in scripture sorry marriage covenant okay there is a marriage covenant what else do you get in scripture there are three covenants baptism the the covenant with the body of christ now it is interesting to know that all these three covenants use the human body as their example your relationship with god what is what is it said you are the body of the of the holy spirit you are the temple of the holy spirit he who has joined to the lord are one with him he uses the body as the example of the covenant between you and god about marriage covenant what does it say the man shall leave the father and mother and they shall become one flesh they are going to be one body the marriage covenant one body yes it's wonderful and what do you think about the covenant with the body of christ we just read we are the body of christ with many members so all these three covenants use the human body as their example but it is said to say people cohabit in all these three relationships i just told you about cohabiting in the marriage relationship they don't enter a marriage relationship they cohabit sometimes they co they cohabit their relationship with god as long as things are good lord i will serve you as long as things are not good i will forget about you you know they cohabit the relationship with god and it sometimes is sad to say that some people cohabit their church relationship they desire intimacy without responsibility they desire pleasure without commitment they are the first to complain you are not looking after me well and there is always a fear put if you don't look after me i am out of this relationship that is cohabiting now dear brothers it is time to stop cohabiting and enter into covenant dear brothers and sisters in christ this is my personal opinion i have seen people in all these three covenants and it is sometimes you wonder 
whether these are three covenants or whether they are the one and the same covenant. I have seen people, first of all, they lose their covenant with their church. They become a cohabiting relationship. Second, they lose